This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Okay, so if I had to do it all over again and start from scratch, and I was looking for my first like serious photography camera, I would most likely pick up the Sony a7R3 in 2024. Let me tell you why. There's one Sony camera that has some kind of sentimental value to me. It is going to be the a7R 3 I literally have it tattooed on my arm right here. Um, I'll talk about why later, but this truly, like if you're looking for a just an only, a photography camera only, you weren't like looking for like the best hybrid camera on the market, a7R 3 still, in my opinion, is probably one of the best options you can find anywhere, like from any camera company. So that's what I'm gonna use today in today's portrait shoot, it's gonna be a lot. It's gonna be really windy today. It's gonna be really windy. It's gonna be really tough. I have a sandbag on my stand here, but it, it's, no, no, this is gonna be bad. So, but let's let's try our best here. Let's see what we got. Oh, nasty. So it's nice when you have that golden hour look when the sun is like outlining the buildings behind her. It's kind of like a nice, like yellow gradient. It's really sweet. Here, take a step. There's like this long thing. It looks like it's coming out of your head. So take a step to your right. You all right, that's good? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go again. One, two, three. Good, again. Okay, good. Good again. One, two, three. There's a pocket of sky behind her that I wanna use to frame her up in. Are you ready? One, two, three. Okay, second shot. I'm gonna try not to blur the beautiful city all to hell with my F1.4 aperture. I think I'm gonna stop down because I have the, the John Hancock right behind her. So I'm gonna stop down at F4. Let's wait for that burst of wind to pass. Uh, actually, more this way. And I'm gonna move the light over here. Uh, more to your right, right there. Let's see if the light will stay. I love those lines behind you, but let's see. Ooh. Okay. I'm so nervous right now. Oh, yes, yes. Oh my God, man. Good. Okay, and, plus, and plus, it was only the stand, it wasn't the light. We were in there though. You don't like the vibe? No, because I like the lines. Yeah. Or you know what? Let's get closer to it. How about that? You might be, if you're Here? Right. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, let's you go in there. Me? Yeah, yeah, the light's still hitting you. All right, go ahead in there. Right there, yeah. And the light, the light's still, okay. The wagon girl. <laughs> the wagon girl had a good idea. Before. Yeah. Okay, let me see what we got. Damn. I'm gonna back up the light though, cause that, it looks so sick. I'm gonna do this. Okay. Now, Closer. yeah, right there. Okay, um, I really love all the arches here. So compositionally, this is really easy. Symmetry, you got lines everywhere. It's beautiful. We got um, nice shadows running all um, along the ground behind the wagon girl. Um, and so the wind is so strong. 
basically I just want make sure I want to make sure that she has some kind of light hitting her um, on this side and then I'm gonna even it out with the light on this side so I don't even know what I'm saying anymore because I feel like I'm fighting for survival over here um, let's see I may have to stop down a little bit or maybe not actually 1.4 works okay let me take a test shot this might be a full body shot okay, okay move the hair off right there Okay, so the first shot that I did was a good example of symmetry with the arches and that was a great shot. It looked really good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just change the angle that, I, that I'm going to shoot her at and now I have a really nice uh, leading lines. So I'm going to have all the shadows, the arches passing across the frame along with the shadows on the ground. So it's going to look really good. So I'm going to change my angles. So I'm going to shoot from this angle instead. All right, Elizabeth. So face, yeah, face your body. Actually, look, look that direction like over there like that this right here hey, so hold you're gonna hold the mostly yeah see so this the light's gonna be turning so almost like hold it here yeah you gotta double you gotta double hand it Damn. What? I'm just gonna body it here. <sighs> yeah. Okay. It's gonna get bad right now. Are you ready? Take a quick second to thank the sponsor of this video that's squarespace if you have been looking to start a website blog or an online store you need to check them out asap every entrepreneur needs a website and with squarespace you don't need to have any kind of graphic design skills to start it's so easy to use you have 24 7 customer support if you ever get bored of the look you can choose from a bunch of pre-made templates and switch everything up at a click of a button. You can also start your own online store like I did where I sell my Lightroom presets and my retouching tutorial to make some passive income. If you wanna check them out for yourself, use the coupon code Manny and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. So if this is your first time here, I'm someone that has a lot of experience with a lot of the newer cameras that are released every year from almost every manufacturer, okay? So when the Sony a7R5 was announced in October of 2022, yeah, I made a video comparing it to the OG A7R1 to see how far image quality has improved over the span of almost 10 years. And what I learned was, yes, it has improved, but not by as, not by as much as you would think, right? So every generation of camera, the tech is constantly improving, but the improvement of image quality in these modern cameras and sensors has really stagnated. So in my testing, I, I found that usually it's the results. It, it's very dependent on the scenario that you're in or whether or not you're going to see any kind of image quality improvement. And that also applies to medium format as well. There are times where you're not going to notice a difference. There are times where you are. That's just how it is. So I think the A7R 3 hits that sweet spot when we're talking about image quality and just the overall package that it offers. The camera body is smaller and lighter than the newer generation bodies and you still get a lot of the same benefits. You get IBIS. This was the first generation to have the larger battery, which is an absolute must. This is also the first generation to get continuous eye autofocus. You get 10 frames per second on the A7R 3 which even after seven years, okay, 10 frames per second is still the standard for Sony cameras like the A7 IV, even the A7R 5 Non-sports cameras are still, they still have this, this 10 frames per second. You get that 42 megapixel BSI sensor. I still think that this sensor can hold its own against anything else out there in terms of quality, okay? Now, used, you can pick up a camera like this 
for under $1,500, which in my opinion, this is the best photocentric camera you can buy at this price point. So if I were doing it all over today, this is 100% the camera that I would buy for my portrait photography. I, I know that this is one of the few cameras that I said has sentimental value to me. I even have it tattooed on my arm here. And, but that's mainly due to what this camera represents in my YouTube journey that I've, that I've had over the past eight years. Um, but do me a favor, look in the comment section. You're gonna see fellow A7R3 owners or previous owners that are going to agree with my points because this camera is absolutely a beast of a camera, still 100% capable, 100% capable camera in 2024 compared to anything else out there. If, I, if my budget was a little higher though, $2,000, maybe a little bit higher, yes, I would be going for the A7 IV or even the A7C II. That 32 megapixel sensor is phenomenal. I, I think that it, it, it's that nice bump from 24 megapixels where it gives you a little bit more leeway to play with the crops and stuff. Uh, I think the sensor is just phenomenal. And looking at the, the improvements, right, the, the features, uh, the 10-bit video, right, for a more hybrid camera, I think that would be w like 100% the camera that I would buy if my budget was a little higher. But under $1,500, I'm not even looking at an APS-C camera because full frame, is, the lenses, there's so many different lenses. They're so cheap, you know, buying the variations of them, the third-party options. Photo camera, uh, definitely picking up the, the Sony a7R III, regardless of like the sentimental value that it has uh, for me. I know when I started, I started with the, like everyone else or most people, the Canon T, I had the T2, no, no, the T3 without the even, without the I. T3, then T3i, then like the 7D, then I moved to the 5D Mark II, which at the time was like around $1,500. So that was like my entry to full frame. Um, and comparing that to this, like, yeah, it's just for $1,500, what you can get in a, in a decade, right? Or what you can get for $1,500, it's pretty substantial. Um, yeah. So anyway, I've seen some of these cameras actually go for like $2,000 on, on, on the internet, which is kind of crazy. I, I don't think it, this camera is worth $2,000, but under 1500 